my fellow gnomes, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be making a brand new game without using any code at all. An entirely new game engine called The Sandbox, who's the sponsor of today's video. And what better way to explain it than simply jump right into it. So this is The Sandbox Game Maker application. It's a little bit like Roblox Studio. We've got this land here that we can play about with and we've got a spawn point there in the middle. So what we can do is we can go and add in blocks, almost a little like Minecraft, right? You can play with them, play about and one by one create some structures. Although actually you can do some pretty cool things. You can click and drag and make a nice big shape. And also we can sort of customize what sort of shape we want to put down. We can put down diamonds and so on. We put in sort of cube spherical type shapes and we can pretty quickly start to make some quite cool terrain here so there we go we've already got some quite interesting terrain and then we're not just limited to blocks too because if we press l we have our library of assets to use and you can see we've got pages of pages of stuff here so i can go and add in Let's search for sort of pesky goblin and look, we've got two goblins. So I can add in a goblin and I can place him down over there. What we now see is we've got this dude over here. Let's go and have a look at him. Here he is. He's a pretty mean looking fella. I really like the aesthetics of this where it's kind of blocky, but it's also a good level of detail. We can load into the experience. Here is my groovy looking gnome character. I tried my best to create a, a gnome. You can think of it as sort of like buff, chad, grandpa gnome. <laughs> and we've got a sword and we can go over to this guy who's immediately going to chase after us. And we can start fighting him and attacking him straight out of the box. There we go. Haha, we've killed him. Now, if we wanted to change how he works, we can do that pretty easily. We just go back and exit the play mode. And then if we click on the guy... We've actually got all of uh, these components inside of him. So we can see he's currently got this behavior. You can change how fast he moves, um, but we can also give him entirely new behavior. So we could make him be, say, a citizen, and then he'll just walk around this area. And we can actually add this behavior to anything. So let's say I wanted to add in a tree here, but then I want to make the tree... Maybe we'll give it some new behavior. So we make the tree a melee enemy instead. So now the tree is going to attack me. And now if I click play, the tree is running towards me. Ah! And the, the, the goblin, he's pretty chill. He's just going to hang around. But this tree, on the other hand, he he's an angry tree. So we've got to fight the tree. And uh, standard tree. Ha ha! We have vanquished the standard tree. So we've got quite a lot of options to play about with. Uh, let's see what we can make in this engine. Now, we're not just limited to purely drag and drop because we can actually customize the logic that's being used here. So if we're using the tree and we're using the melee enemy, well, we can actually go and edit the logic. And now you can see we have all these circles and different stats we can play about with. I'm not going to change these too much, but what I'm going to change is the on death event and then if I want to go ahead and create a quest all I have to do is go to the rules area here and I can very quickly set up the first quest just using these drop downs and plugging them in to those behaviors from my other parts. So now when I load in it automatically creates all this UI for us. Tree survival. Defeat the crazy evil tree. This looks really clean and smooth. I can then trigger new events like having this wizard spawn in on its death. Thank you, adventurer. Next up, I expanded it a little more. So this time you could interact with the wizard and I get this really nice dialogue UI that toggles the next quest. I think all the UI in the sandbox is looking really polished and it's the sort of thing that if you're trying to code all this, you could easily spend hours on it. And then yet here, all we can do is we can just get on with making our game and not get bogged down with all of that. Talking of making our game though, I need to work on expanding this into a bit more of a playable experience. So while I'm doing that, I had the chance to have a sit down with a member of the Sandbox team to find out a little bit more about the platform. 
Hello. Hey, Gnome. How's it going? Well, thank you very much for your time. I think a question that a lot of my viewers who are Roblox developers are going to have is, as a developer, why should they take notice of the Sandbox? One thing I like about the Sandbox is like, whenever there's a new platform, you're kind of almost like playing from an even playing field. Minecraft, Roblox, right? There's all these top creators out there now. And as a new creator, you're like, oh shoot, like barrier entry right now is like pretty high if you, if you, if you wanted to become like the top Minecraft or Roblox creator. Mm -hmm. So, but it's nice with the sandbox because like you're starting off relatively with an even playing field. So it's kind of exciting that that nothing has been paved yet and, and you're only limited by your imagination, right? So. Yeah, definitely an exciting prospect. Now I see there's something about a game maker fund to support new creators. Can you tell me a bit about that? Uh, it's a way that we, as a company, are giving people a chance to publish games. And so, yeah, promotion and support for your project during all the phases. So one of the things, again, when if you're on the Game Maker Fund website, um, you can kind of see the perks that we offer. We have 300 million sand in the Game Maker Fund in order to put forward to these types of projects. And that's quite and a so lot like, of money, isn't it? I mean, that's, uh, that's yeah. millions of yeah. dollars, right? Yeah. And so... What we also offer, not just grant payments on a per game basis, but we have people in the fund as part of the program that can offer support and like consultancy. So what that means is like, you know, obviously you don't have to be the best. I mean, we have resources to help you get to that point too. Yeah, I think that's going to be really encouraging for a lot of new developers. Yeah. See, they can yeah. have uh, that little bit of funding and support as well and then get their yeah. game out there because that's one of the yeah. hardest things actually seeing your game yeah. to fruition and talking of community i see you run your own game jams yeah we have them pretty regularly i, I mean I, I i see something at least once a month but i'm not sure the frequency in which we do it i liked how the sandbox has always been creator friendly so yeah it's a really cool community um i don't know if you had a chance to check out our discord but our discord's pretty active to, for your viewers if they're interested yeah i mean obviously it's a community that they can tap into if they want and enough of that. But on the serious note, thanks to Evan for having the call with me, much appreciated. Back to our own game though, and you can see it's now starting to come together nicely. Now, so far, I've just been using the assets from the library to build with, and this gives me a good range to work with, but I think it's time to add some creations of our own. Because we have the ability to create entirely custom creations for the sandbox with a tool of theirs called Vox Edit. It's a bit like doing pixel art, but in 3D with what are called voxels here. You can create something entirely from scratch or use one of their templates as a building block. So I took the small humanoid and set about making some adjustments. You can probably guess what I'm making. Of course, I had to make my namesake a gentle little gnome chap you can see here. He's got some sort of vague idea of a tunic. Of course, a beard and a pointy gnome hat, and even some little pointy boots. Pretty cute, and he can go straight into our game. Now, what's really exciting about Vox Edit is you can actually publish these creations to the marketplace and sell them to other users as people are doing right now. So there's all these assets that are available, people are selling, and if you wanted, you can go and buy these and add them to your game, or you could just be a modeler inside Vox Edit. And I think a lot of people will have a lot of fun just doing that. So now we've got the all important gnomes in our game. We've got some quests and it's pretty much all ready to play. But I'm not going to spoil it all in this video. If you want to see all the crazy non-stop action this game contains, then click my link down in the description to head over to the sandbox where you can check out my game along with thousands of others and maybe even start making your own games and voxel art too. Who knows? Maybe you could be the next big sandbox creator. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But until next time, goodbye!